Welcome back everyone to the GGBL. Opening day has come and gone. We are 38 games into the regular season, which means we're in the month of May. That's exactly what we're going to do here in today's episode, is get some May gameplay, see how these teams are doing, who's legit, who's not, who's a postseason contender, who's not, who's fake, who's for real. That's what we really got to decide here today. So Kansas City and Atlanta, two teams that we did not see a whole lot of last season. And honestly, they're playing above 500 baseball. One of these teams might be able to make a little bit of a run in their respective divisions. NL Central, kind of tight. NL East, kind of tight. So we'll see how this all plays out. But Wallace Hayes is going to lead the game off with a home run, as far as the highlight reels go. we got Jackson DeVarco on the other side. He is 3-0 right now. 208 ERA, 142 whip. He does give up some hits. He does give up some walks. This is about really a good time to go get him. Atlanta gets a response home run by Bobby Madsen, the right fielder. It's now tied up one to one, but look at this swing. Boosh. See you later. Thing just curved right inside the foul pole. And that's a big time blast for Atlanta. Let's jump out here to the top of the third with a man on second base. And somehow Mikey Porter lifts this one right in front of Bobby Madsen. After looking at that swing, it looked like that was going to be an easy pop up, easy fly out for Madsen to make the play, but. No such luck. Bottom four, DeVarco. Still pitching well here. Has only one mistake, one blemish against him. That home run to Madsen. Let's jump to the top of the fifth here. 0-2 pitch, and he got Wallace Hayes, who got that solo home run off of him earlier in the game. Staring it down. Strike three. Big number 99, Mikey Porter. Already a ribby today. Steps up again. RBI spot. But Trick Matthews comes through. Shuts him down. So it's still a pretty tight game. Kansas City's going to go to their bullpen here. Howie Sellers, 15 Ks to 16 walks. Does not have a lot of control, does this pitcher. So we'll see how he's going to perform here in the bottom of the fifth inning. He's going to get out of the little mini jam with a runner on base. So far, so good here for Kansas City. Still holding on to that lead. Top six, Lamont St. Aud, the former Michigan Mallard, was acquired in the trade day. Trade day package. He's going to come on with a leadoff triple. Wow, Atlanta, you got to find a way to shut this thing down. Strikeouts, ground balls, something. Nope, that's not going to get it done. Hans Brolo, the big first baseman, knocks him in. It is 3-1 Kansas City. Starting to get away from Atlanta just a touch. Trig Matthews has to come out of the game. They're going to go to the bullpen here. Let's see who they call on. Guillermo Mendez, he's 4-0. He does have one save and one opportunity and a pretty good ERA. Sparkling. Strikeouts to walks as well. I'd love to see that. He's a good pitcher. Got the ground ball that he needed. Should have been a double play. Luckily it was. First baseman able to make the tag with the glove. You know the throw got him offline just a tad. Just a little bit here. Luke Vinskov, the rookie. Ground ball over here to second baseman Xander Pollock. Makes the little flip over there. And they're out of the inning. Let's go top seven after a really good inning by Mendez. He stays out here for the seventh. Letterman comes on with a double. And then we got Benny Martinez. Big, deep drive out to center field. And Chris Rosario, the athletic center fielder, the speedy center fielder, cannot make the catch after a really nice dive. And that's going to allow another run to cross for Kansas City. Benny Martinez comes through yet again. He has been a big-time gameplay type of player. He comes through constantly in gameplay. Wallace Hayes comes up, gets another RBI. That's a sack fly, and it's 5-1 KC. I think this one looks to be over. Top nine, Vinskov gets a base hit here. Not his first, but his first in gameplay. Gets on with the leadoff double here. Atlanta will get another run. They'll tack on another run, not in this highlight reel. But Wallace Hayes comes up again, and yet again, hits a home run. That's two home runs from Wallace Hayes, and he definitely put the stamp on this one. This one's over. 8-2 to two is your final score. Kansas City gets a nice win. It is one win out of 162 games, so I completely get it. Like, why are we stuck here on May gameplay? We're just trying to get a better feel, guys. We're just trying to get a better feel for who's who, who's legit, what players to watch out for. Guy like Wallace Hayes, dude that was high performer last year, but kind of got lost in the shuffle because Kansas City wasn't very good. Just some teams that we haven't seen a whole lot of, and, you know, our guy's going to bounce back. Guys like, of course, Kenneth Alexander Jr. Is he going to be able to come through in gameplay? We'll find out. 
We got Zeke Zachary on the mound here for Seattle against Richmond. 25 win, Seattle, and he's been a major part of it. 6-0 on the season. Nine home runs for Ricky Holberman. So a good matchup here. Lefty, righty. Let's see who wins the battle. Hard hit ground ball up the middle to Damian Campbell, the second baseman. He'll make the throw. But the old man, 35-year-old, almost beat that play out. Keep running, Ricky. Keep running. Meanwhile, Jonathan Piazza is 4-1. Respectable ERA. I like it. Striking out Goro Kobayashi. He has recently been called up, was raking down in the minor leagues. He's one of the international prospects. If you guys are playing in the GGBL fantasy game, this was one. This player was one and submitted by Portugal. I think he's in the chat here tonight. Ground ball here from KAJ up the middle. Base hit. Vic Fluey cannot make the play, so KAJ is on with a single. So still two down here in the inning. Runners on the corners. Be popped up. Damian Campbell cannot come through in the clutch, so Piazza gets out of it. 3 2 pitch to Brady Dunn, and somehow this man draws a walk. Lucky for him because we've got Julian Cavedo, guy that was a rookie last year, top 50 prospect, hit a really clutch home run in the postseason. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, he's, he's now up here at the big club. I think he performed admirably to the point he's got to be called up. So after a pop up to first base, Logan Boucher, who hits lefties really, really well, strikes out here. Zeke Zachary shuts him down. Let's go bottom third. That is a base hit for Joe Shotora. So both KAJ and Joe Shotora have a base hit here tonight. Damian Campbell laces this ball out to left field, and Brady Dunn handling duties out there in the outfield again. Cannot come through. And that's an RBI single off the glove of Brady Dunn. Unbelievable. This guy, he just doesn't come through for us. Ricky makes the play over at third base, and that is all Seattle's going to get is the lone run. Let's go to the top of the fourth inning. Ricky Holberman, base hit, leadoff, single, hard hit baseball, right back up the middle again. He's timing Zig Zachary up here pretty good, but Vic Flutie, ground ball, double play. Seattle, yet again, works out of a jam. That's why this guy is 6 0. Let's go to the fifth inning. Bottom five, actually. Joshua Tora strikes out, so Piazza gets him there. Kingston Mondeser with one down in the top of the sixth. That is going to be extra bases for Mondeser, the rookie. Throw coming in from Kobayashi. He hits the cutoff man, but the speedy Mondeser able to get the second base. Good job by Goro Kobayashi in center field right there. I mean, that could have been a, a triple. Possibly an inside the Parker. He's fast. Kingston is very, very fast. But good play just to hold him to a double. So Zeke Zachary's day is done. He's still holding on to the lead. But if we do knock this run in, he gets a no decision. Oh, off the base of the wall. Here is Ari. Can't make the play in right field. That is going to score Kingston Mondeser and Logan Boucher. What? Boucher's out? What is that? Richmond's always getting the bad calls on us, guys. Always getting the bad calls. Where is he out? Oh, that is such a bang bang play. It's like microscopic. Judgment call, 50-50 call. Umpire went with the fielder. He didn't think that Boucher made a good enough move to sell that he was safe. So now we gotta go bottom six. Piazza, his eighth strikeout of the ball game. 3-2 pitch here to Rafael Irizarry. Deep fly ball out to left field. Brady Dunn! Makes the grab. Finally, the guy comes through on defense. Dude's shuffling his feet out there like a penguin. He's waddling out there in left field. We should be removing him from left field, actually. This man should just be a designated hitter. Like, let's put Connor Altman out there. Maybe Brady Dunn can play some first base. Something. Maybe just put Dunn at DH. Oh, I've had it with this guy. But great play, Brady. Great play. So Piazza was really good. Eight strikeouts, only one earned run against him. Two outs here with Saul Taylor. He promptly walks Waylon Mathis. Gives up a base hit to Jack Mitchell. Now Richmond's kind of regretting the move here. He does have to face three batters. So now he's got to get McCullough, and he's going to walk him. So crucial spot now for the youngster, the leadoff hitter, Goro Kobayashi. He has three strikeouts today. He is 0 for 3 with three Ks. He's in a 2-2 count now. Taylor to Kobayashi. Swung on and missed with the bases loaded. The youngster can't come through, but the veteran Saul Taylor does. 
Oof, I don't even know how we're tied right now. Seven hits for Seattle, three for Richmond. Our offense yet to come through. We got one run up on the board. Three hits. We just have not been able to get anything going here against Seattle pitching. But as soon as I say that, we got something going, guys. Julian Cavedo, base hit. Next batter, Mondeser. Lifts this one to right field. That's in front of Irizarry. Cavedo will be on second. Seattle got a little lucky there. We had a hit and run going. Cavedo could have been on third had he gotten a better read on the ball. So line drive, he saw it off the bat. Had to go backward, back to first base. But instead he's on second. That's a line drive base hit for Logan Boucher. And again, another line drive where Cavedo's got to read that thing and go back to the base. Could have been a run scored. But Boucher's pumped up, hits lefties really, really well. And so does Ricky Hoberman. I'm not sure what the Seattle management's thinking here, putting in the left-hander to face all these right-handed hitters. He gets a split-finger fastball inside and knew exactly what to do with it. Because you can't do too much with that pitch. But Holderman gets the job done. And that's why you pay a guy like that. That's why you pay him the big bucks. Chris Addison, we didn't get some insurance there. We didn't get it. So Giuseppe Young comes through in that spot at least. He shuts it down. Only a one-run deficit. Next batter up here for Seattle in the bottom of the eighth. A leadoff double for Waylon Mathis. It's a huge run. Very important run right there. That was a big spot for Richmond. So we got a little back and forth battle. Both teams teetering on a win or a loss. It's close. We got a runner to third. What? They're going to take off. What are they doing? Mathis trying to steal third in the bottom of the eighth. He's going to get gunned down by Chris Addison. And then Mark Cullen comes through with a strikeout on McCullough. Absolutely huge for Richmond. And what is Seattle doing? They're throwing the game away. Oh my gosh. One two pitch on Kobayashi. And again, he is 0 for 4 with 4 Ks. He's now 0 for 5 with 5 Ks. Is it a coincidence that his number is 55? I don't know. But we got another strikeout here on Miller. He's going to go down. One more out to go get. And it is KAJ. Ground ball to Darius Wilson. Makes the easy throw over to first base. And the good boys will be victorious here in this one. 2-1 to one is your final score. It was a good game. You know, whether you're on the winning side or the losing side, if, as far as your fandom goes, it was a great game. Pitching, pitching, pitching. Offense had to find some creative ways in order to get those runs across. So great game by Zig Zachary. Great game by Jonathan Piazza. Eight strikeouts for him. Saul Taylor, Cullen, Navarre, the bullpen for the good boys. Still one of the strengths of this team. Got it done. Kobayashi, 0 for 5, 5 strikeouts. He is still, despite that effort today, despite that performance, he's still hitting above 300 at 306. So it kind of gives you an idea of how well he was actually performing before this game took place, right? Let's head on out here to Mallard Grounds. we got an interesting matchup here, both teams the Michigan Mallards and the Houston Copperheads, both two and a half games back in their own division, their respective divisions. Of course, Houston being in the NL Central and Michigan being in the AL East. So kind of a cool matchup here. Plus, we've got Angel Escobar, the custom pitcher that pitched in the GGBL Showcase last season. So he was just drafted a year ago. He's been in the bullpen, so kind of easing him into some action, but now he gets his first ever GGBL start. And he's just striking out everybody. He's got three strikeouts in the first inning. Like that fastball, that delivery, the guy has some pretty nasty stuff by the looks of it here. Houston with Valenzuela coming up. Gets an RBI double. Should be a double. Easy double right there. It's going to be the first run here of the ball game. So one nothing Houston. Let's go top third. Denzel Good, the fourth. In the gap. Base hit. He's going to get another run home. Houston should be up 2 to nothing, Easy. And Denzel Good's going for third. He's got that. RBI triple for the Copperheads. And they are jumping all over Michigan right now. Still top third. Jay Kinney comes up. That's a base hit here to right field. Throw is not going to come in. They're just going to concede the run. Don't even try it. Jay Kinney probably going to head for second at that point too. Top fourth. 3 nothing game. And Donnellan is still out there. And... He's going to give up a two-run shot here to Peter Fortenberry. That thing got out in a hurry. That was a blast. Number seven here for Fortenberry. 110 exit velo. Might as well call it 111. Kai Rico comes up with a 2-2 pitch in the fourth. Same inning. Gets a base hit here. And Michigan's just, like, checked out. I don't know what they're doing. Like, 
What's going on here? <laughs> Michigan's not ready to play tonight. Sean Hudson's got to come on and shut this thing down before it gets way too out of hand. It is 5-0 here still. Denzel good. It's going to get plunked. Like, it just doesn't stop for Michigan. Let's see what happens here. Jay Kinney comes up, 2-2 pitch. He's striking out. That's a change up. Pretty filthy pitch. You're gearing up for a fastball, something you can do some damage on, and then he tosses that off speed on you. Very, very tough. Then Dobie strikes out, swinging two. So Hudson comes out in relief and does a job. It's still 5-0. Meanwhile, bottom four. He's going to get Taylor. He's going to get Jet. Escobar is just slicing him up. Let's jump to the bottom of the fifth. Still no hits given up to this point until Alex Humberto knocks one through the middle. So that is the first base hit given up by Angel Escobar. And then he drops a nice little slider right onto Puckett. That is strikeout number seven. And that's actually going to do it for the youngster. So an amazing performance. An amazing first ever professional start for Angel Escobar. Hats off to you, young man. I mean, you pitched insanely well. And now it's up to Houston's bullpen, which I think they should be able to handle this with a 5 nothing lead. But we've seen some crazy comebacks in the past, haven't we? Yeah, we have. So still bottom five. Sparks walks glass. 1-2 pitcher upcoming to Russell Yon. And that is ground ball right to Kinney. Final out of the fifth. I guess I kind of led you guys on a little bit, huh? Led you on a little bit. The suspense. Let's go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Yes, we're going to jump all the way to the eighth. Felipe Tavares, the first baseman, slash DH. Kind of splits time with Dalton Jett over there at first. Base hit, RBI double, making this thing 5-2. to two. Runners now in first and second. Here comes Dalton Jett, speaking of him. Ground ball, the double play opportunity. Yes, sir, turned by Jay Kinney and Denzel Good. Look at that. They love it. They're all pumped up and... Uh, that's going to pretty much do it. Kinney, ground ball, jump throw, with a little flash at the end, a little flare. Houston will get the W. Yeah, it was pretty much, pretty much a dominating win right there. You know, Michigan had some opportunities. They had runners in scoring position. They had bases loaded a couple times. Yeah, they just didn't really, didn't really cash in, didn't come through. We'll take a look individually how Michigan's offense did, because I don't think... The big guys in the lineup did much. I don't think Dalton Jett did anything. I don't think Don Taylor did anything. Like, they need those guys to step up. And Angel Escobar really knocking down that ERA, right? So zero earned, seven strikeouts here today. Dalton Jett 0 for with a K. Don Taylor 1 for 3 with a walk. Two strikeouts. Parvin Mira, Humberto. So if you're Michigan, you're looking ahead to the draft. It's upcoming here in July. You need a guy that's going to be able to produce some power. Or even in the offseason if you guys are eliminated. Go get some power. That run production right now is abysmal. So, guys, let's turn our attention now here to an AL West matchup. we got the Cyclones from Oklahoma City taking on the Colorado Coyotes. And why is this game important? Well, you saw the records. Colorado is currently one of the worst teams, if not the worst team, in all of the GGBL. OKC is 20-20, and 20, so they're at 500 right now. And, you know, Colorado's got a chance to turn their season around. They get on a good win streak here. They got a real good shot at potentially winning that division. Teams like the Nuggets, teams like the Cyclones that we're watching here today. You've got the Bandits out there in the AL West as well. It can be had. Colorado is one of my dark horse teams. They've just been playing terribly. And BJ Franks is one of the main reasons why. Their pitching staff has been awful. <laughs> it's been bad. Two of their best pitchers, Satchel Michaels and BJ Franks, both been terrible this season. They got to find a way to catch some momentum. This would be a good time to do it. On OKC's side, they're 20 and 20. They're just trying to hang in as well. So really, two teams, they're on the teetering point of losing their season or keeping their season alive. So one nothing Colorado after that Julian Lorenz solo home run. Then we're going to jump here to the top of the second. And Connor Slater giving up another solo shot. This one to Josh Adams. 441 foot bomb that's ridiculous that's insane bottom two Kozar gets that home run back with 361 so not not as far there's more of a line drive home run but it's a home run all the same top third base hit right past third baseman that is Julian Lorenz yet again should score the runner and it will it's gonna be three to one Colorado 
staking on to that early lead. They get that Cozart home run back. Still top of the third, and CC Chavez, deep drive to left field. That is the third home run given up from Connor Slater. And it is a two-run home run for Chavez. Of course, Slater staring him down now. He doesn't really like that. The antics right there, but don't give up the home run. So 5-1 game now. Let's jump to the bottom of the fourth. B.J. Franks kind of settled down a little bit here, but a man on first, and that is Cozart again with a base hit. And what a play right there in right field. Josh Adams throwing home, and what in the world is Han Berger doing? Then again, it's 5-1. You got to make something happen here, but I think that's more of an incredible play on defense than it is Hamburger's fault. I'm going to say that's just an incredible defensive play. Man, speaking of incredible defensive plays, here's Matt Tate lifting a foul ball out there to right. And look at Karev almost making the catch. Would have been an incredible play because the very next pitch is a solo home run. Matt Tate comes through and extends lead out 6-1. to one. And it truly is a game of inches. If Karev makes that catch... Matt Tate doesn't have another opportunity to hit this home run. And watch where that ball comes off the bat. Like, he com he completely lifted that thing. The launch angle must have been ridiculous there. Just to get that thing lofted out there over the seats. Game of inches. Neptune St. Clair, the rookie, comes through with another home run. Tally on his total. He's got five on the season. Giving this out to 7-1. to one. Let's jump to the seventh inning. We've got a base hit for Paxton Burnside. So in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back innings, five, six, and seven, you got Colorado tacking on more runs. It's now eight to one. I think that that's a pretty good insurance buffer right there for anything that Oklahoma City is about to do. Oh, what a play. Make the play, St. Clair. Ugh. Tosses that thing in the outfield. Here comes a throw from right field. Oh, could have been doubled up on errors right there. But St. Clair... You gotta, you gotta blame the CPU on this one. I think in real life, you make that play, you tag third with the glove, throw it to first base, you get the double play, like it's a beautiful turn double play. But instead, we're dealing with some silly AI. And Braden Leroy smacks this. Three run shot. We got ourselves a game again, guys. It is eight to five. Oklahoma City is back in the game. Somehow, somehow, some way, this thing was eight to one. Now eight to five, could be eight to six. Yes, it will be. Bottom ninth, Ray Knowles comes through, knocking an RBI single. He represents the tying run. If Simeon Karev can get this one out of the park, he can't. That's a base hit. So now the winning run comes to the plate. And it is none other than Mr. Han Berger. Can he come through in the clutch for the Cyclones? Let's see what he's got. Garlobo in a 2-2 count. See what he draws up here against the big man. Here it comes. Slider low and away. Berger's going to hold off. Leroy's on deck, so you have to get Berger. This man hit a three-run shot earlier in the game. Full count. Garlobo to Berger. Here it comes. Fastball swung on and missed. And Berger will go down swinging. Colorado hangs on, gets the much-needed victory there. 8-6. Will this be the game that we can all look back to as the game that turns Colorado's season around? We'll find out. Game of the week coming up on Friday, by the way, guys. And then after the game of the week stream, I will be simulating the rest of the month. So we'll see if this game actually did something to boost the morale of the Coyotes clubhouse. Now, something to note here. Look how early the Hamburger was in this swing. Watch this right here. I'm going to replay it one more time. Look at where the fastball was. It hadn't even crossed over the dirt, the dirt cutout. And Berger was way out in front of a fastball. It just goes to show how badly that he wanted to do damage on that pitch. One thing to also note that that last pitch was a 96 mile an hour fastball. So Garlobo took just a little bit off and it got him to be way out in front. So yeah, two miles an hour difference, that does matter when you're gearing up for 98, 99, 100. So a little cat and mouse matchup between those two, Berger and Garlobo. So now let's head out to Golden Bay Park, one of my favorite ballparks that admittedly was not created by me. It was created by a community member, not here in the GG9 community, but MLB The Show community. I just love the way it looks. It's, it's beautiful. It's got the Golden Gate Bridge back there. It's sweet looking. You know who else is pretty sweet looking? 
Vincent Bonds. It's pretty good, right? Rookie, hitting above 330 at this point. Who's not looking good? Stephen Goldie. This is their ace. An eight plus ERA right now. He needs a good game. San Francisco needs to find a way to get their season back on track. They're only under 500 by a couple games. San Diego's actually in second place here in the NL West. So they're playing good baseball. And after two quick outs, it looked like Stephen Goldie was on his way to cruising through this thing. However, two hits, back-to-back -back hits. That's going to be in question now. He's got to go get Nacho Molina now. Danny Riddle with the base knock. He's got to get Molina. He pops him up. That should do it. Let's see if Navoa can make the catch. We know how sometimes these things can pop out of their gloves. Easy grabs sometimes are tough, apparently. And they do. So San Diego can't cash in. San Francisco gets a little lucky. They get out of the jam. Let's go bottom first. Castaneda. Quick work on the Grizzlies offense. Turn it over here to the top of the third. We got Julian Reyes. The NL leader in doubles by three. We've also seen Wallace Hayes. We've seen Cash Fortuna play. Some really good hitters, right? Well, Julian Reyes, no double here, but he does get a single. Going to move the runner up a base. So top third, Cornelius Kane back up to bat here. Ground ball should be a double play. Unassisted. Yes, sir. Two quick outs right there in the top of the third. The great play by Navoa. It actually looks like he's playing second base today. Looks like Schnell is actually the shortstop. So those beards kind of throw me off a little bit. <laughs> Novoa is not the shortstop. He's playing second base. So we got a walk here. Danny Riddle. Runners on the corners now. Leaving Nacho Molina with another opportunity to come through. Can't get it done. That's the second time that he's popped up in the infield with two runners on. Looking to do some damage and he can't get it done. So bottom third. Castaneda. Trying to get a play from his outfielder here. That's Otto. He's going to dive for it. It's going to roll all the way to the wall. That is the catcher, Eric Stoitziatis. He's going to go into third base, standing up. A one-out triple. That's going to turn the lineup back over here to the leadoff hitter. That is Novoa. And that's a fly ball. It's going to fall right in. Mm. Right in front of center fielder. That is painful. That's painful. Castaneda has been pitching good up until this point. He will get out of the third inning. Let's go to the top of the fourth. And Carson Willard goes deep. Opposite field shot to tie the game up. Goldie had been kind of skating on thin ice a little bit. He's been working himself out of some jams, but this one left absolutely no doubt. Take one more look here on the replay. Carson Willard going opposite field. It had to hang on as long as it could. Went right over top of the foul pole. Unbelievable. So bottom fourth, Will Till able to draw a walk. And Castaneda's got this man to get. It's been Vincent Bonds. He's been a driving force in this offense all season long, but he's now 0 for today. Can't come through with Will Till on base. Striking out. Full count pitch here. Two men on again for Nacho Molina. No pop up here. That is a three run homer for the big man, Nacho Molina. Number five on the season. Might as well be looking at the Taco Bell menu. That's Nachos Belgrande. Number five for Molina. Top nine, six to one. San Diego will get another couple runs here. And Molina will get another home run. Might as well upgrade him to Nachos Supreme. Love it. San Diego will shut it down. Seven to one is your final score. A little pop up here to third base. San Francisco's offense was nowhere to be found. Castaneda and the bullpen for the Gauchos got it done. Only four hits for the Grizzlies today. Castaneda improves to 5-2. and two. And Rocco Farmer, the bullpen man for San Francisco, gets the loss. Nacho, of course, being my player of the game. That will be the show's player of the game as well. Two for today with two home runs. Four ribbies everywhere you look. Offense was humming for the Gauchos. Five Ks for Castaneda. Went five innings. He did qualify for the victory, which he got. And then you look at San Francisco's offense, like Will Till, one for with two walks. He was, I mean, he contributed, but everybody else was just really shut down. Steven Goldie still continues to kind of work through some problems that he's having. Might be a mechanical issue. Three and two-thirds, four walks. That's not going to cut it. San Diego took care of business here today. 
Let's get out to another NLS teams matchup here. We got the LA Knights taking on the Iowa Reapers. Two of the best teams in the GGBL this year. Love this matchup. I think it should be a good one. Let's get it started. Top first, Ricky Rudy giving up a base hit here to Xavier Hawkins. The leadoff hitter, of course, Terry Haas flying out. Next batter up is George Cruz, the number three hitter. Oh, what a throw from left field, but what a slide by Xavier Hawkins. Somehow he avoided that tag. That's unbelievable. And that was a hit and run, by the way. Like, that's a hot shot ground ball to left field. And somehow Hawkins, who was from first base, by the way, guys, he went from first to third on a ground ball to left field. That's insanity. Here's a deep drive to center field. Almanzar with the great job just to get there. But we've got miscommunication here. Ricky Rudy can't get over to third base fast enough. And Salvatore comes through with a two RBI triple. Iowa just continuing to rake. 3-2 count. And Dino fly ball to right field. That play will be made, but the run is going to score. So Salvatore scores. It's 3-0 Iowa. Giving Richard Strongman, who's already 6-1 on the season, a winning pitcher, a really big cushion. Look at this knuckleball. I mean, this is why Iowa is going to be really good this season. Again, they were the best team all year last year. But this is why they're going to be really good again this year. Good pitching, good defense. Giuseppe Ferrari out there in right field. Got a strong arm. Somehow David Bayek almost got thrown out. I mean, this is a very balanced team, very good team. Look at this catch by Terry Haas. Janiel Rivera just got robbed of an extra base hit because of the speed from Terry Haas. This team is complete. They've got pitching. They've got defense. They've got speed. They've got offense. I'm, I'm probably taking Iowa to win it all this year. Just saying. It's very early, but I think they got a little bit upset by Washington last year in the postseason. They came all the way back and beat them up three games to one. Like, I, I think Iowa's got this thing this season. I mean, they are taking it to L.A. Top two, it is five to nothing now. Corey Davis with the two-run shot, number seven on the season. Ricky Rudy cannot believe that that ball went out. Like, he had to turn on that thing really, really hard to get that thing over the fence, and he did. Look at the knuckleball here from Strongman. Two strikeouts there. Bottom third we go. Let's jump to the top of the fourth here. We got Giuseppe Ferrari who struck out on his first at-bat of the game here. But he does get an infield single. He lays down a bunt. You don't see that in the GGBL very often. Like, I mean, just think about what these guys are doing right now. They're laying down, down bunts. They're stealing bases. They're being aggressive on the base paths. They're playing good defense. They are literally doing everything you could possibly want your team to do. They are the most complete team in the league. Terry Haas hit the ball hard here. Great play by Ariano. Got the double play. You know, in most situations, most people would freak out and say, oh, God, I got to let that thing hit the ground. I got to get a double play. But he got it anyway with the tag. So fourth inning is over. The leadoff bunt single by Ferrari doesn't come to pass. Doesn't come to hurt L.A. Ground ball up the middle. Oh, my. What a play by Xavier Hawkins. Janiel Rivera has now been robbed twice in this game by good plays up the middle. Hawkins with the dive. Scoop on the other end by Davis. Great play in center field by Terry Haas. And with the one out, Vasquez will hit a solo shot. But is this where LA comes back? It's the fifth inning. They got four more to go. Only down by four runs. They can chip away. They can for sure chip away. They are never dead until the final out of the ninth inning. That's, that's it. They're always in range of striking distance. They're always in range of striking back. 2-2 pitch here, and Bayek going to foul out, and that's going to do it for L.A. We're actually going to jump all the way to the ninth inning, guys. L.A. has not scored any more runs. Iowa has not tacked on any more as well. Let's jump all the way here to the ninth. Junior Rivera, full count pitch. He grounds out. Nice play there by Andino at third. Striking out Ariano, the big-time first baseman. And Trujillo against Giovanni Ortiz. Ground ball, and that's going to hit the base. Hawkins with the throw back over to first. Almost got him. Almost got him. But this is what a team like the LA Knights, this is what they do. They find ways to just kind of hang around 
And you can't kill them until the very final out. It's like they sold their soul, man. They sold their soul to the devil. But you know what? The Reapers, just by nature, just by their very name, they might be a little more devilish. You know, they might have sold their souls too. They're really good. They might become the new L.A. I hate to think that way because I kind of like them right now. I like them. I like the storyline that they're, that they're bringing to the league. You know, they're kind of the, the up-and-coming team. But they might get there. Some people might start getting tired of how much they win. They're just a very complete team all the way around. Haas goes over, and Dino goes over. Everybody else, I think, had a hit for the Iowa Reapers. They had eight hits in total. But, you know, with five runs, it just tells me that they, they took a lot of bases. They were aggressive on the base path and uh, got themselves into some good situations for their hitters. The rest was history. So Ricky Rudy, two and two-thirds, was taxing the bullpen big time here today with Evers at three and a third, Clay Hodges with two, Timmy Cuevas with one. And then if you go back and you look at their box score, you had Janiel Rivera go over, you had Ortiz, the catcher, go one for, and then Ariano also went over as well. So the big three in this lineup didn't really do too much. Iowa's pitching staff got it done. They took care of business here. Didn't get too sidetracked with who they were playing, right? They didn't fall into the trap like, oh, it's LA. We're on the road. It's scary. No, they just went in, they took care of business, and then they got out of here, right? They got out of here with a W, a very solid W. Regardless, guys, live stream on Friday night, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Our game of the week this week will be Washington against Las Vegas. So interesting matchup there. I don't think we've ever seen those two teams play against each other. Should be a fun one here. Vegas is currently shooting for first place. They're kind of in the mix right now for the playoffs, but again, it, it's early. And Washington, of course, just trying to uh, keep that momentum, man, as the champions, right? Just try to keep that momentum. They've got some teams behind them in the East that are trying to make a push at them, but it should be a good game. We'll see how it plays out. So I'll see you guys on Friday night for the live stream. Leave a like if you like this thing. As always, thank you so much for watching, and peace.